Happy Monday again, and uh, we are back with part two when we're talking about China and Africa with the beautiful Farsha from Something Nice Podcast. You asked for part two, and we're delivering. Back to the question: So, yeah. why are the African leaders allowing this to happen? Is is this their fault, or uh, do do they have their hands tied, or uh, is this because they are corrupted, or how can we actually how ever we even put it in a context? Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, you know that your people just went through decades and decades and years and years and and of of, of like a being treated unfairly yeah. for their own land, yeah. and and now you might be inviting someone else who might come in a little bit smart, kind-hearted, yeah. you know, on the lookout. Yeah. But then you can see, like, you know, like, because at the end of the day, um, it, people from Zambia, like the videos that I've been watching, yeah. they are a little bit upset about, Very like... Very upset. They're, like, everywhere you go, it's just China everywhere. It's, like, you know, their Very writings upset. and the, 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 the industries is yeah. everywhere in Zambia, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So how is that possible that the African leaders that, you know, are on power... Some people have said that they've got the, you know, the, the right to actually set the rules and, mm-hmm. and, and limit um, China... In your own researches, why do you think like African leaders are not doing so? African leaders, and this is a conversation that's very long in general with African leaders. I think politically, Africa is still finding stability. Mm-hmm. And with that, you've got, you've still got an era of Puppet col- like puppet colonization, puppet post colonization left. Okay. The people in power. Yeah. Are not necessarily the people that were elected to be in power in a lot of places, mm. and um, that needs to be remembered. Yeah. You do have African leaders that are absolutely doing their best to regulate and working phenomenally. Like mm-hmm. I must say, and mm. you know, trying to ensure that if they're getting in bed with China. They they they're gonna work hard thick. to actually like their walls uh, are yeah, thick, yeah, you know, yeah. and it, this spectrum goes both ways. But at the same time, they are some really big nations. You know, when I if I talk about Nigeria, yeah, if I talk about a little bit of Ghana, even you know, like corruption is slowly coming in. Mm-hmm. But will, can you blame the African leaders? Is a really big question. It is actually where I was coming from because um, uh, when you look at uh, uh, the history of, of Africa in the eight in the nineties, mm-hmm. you know, where we, it was full of wars, was full of like disease breaking out and hunger everywhere, yeah. and um, Africa having like its debts that it was due to be paid back, and yeah. and they'd say maybe that was a miracle for China to just found itself right there in the right timing. So I can understand how, like, maybe, you know, like a president might come and inherit, like, a huge debt from, from the previous previous president yeah. and then looking for the ways out. And yeah. then China is there, it's like, it's okay, I'm going to help, help this and, and that, that, yeah. that. But then, you know, along the way, you know, like, you can't, you can't commit to your promises and no. then, boom, like, Mombasa is gone yeah. and uh, Victoria Force is gone. That kind of thing, I yeah, feel like that, I can understand right. it from that way. Um, but also when you look at it even further, you know, like, uh, let's not look at how maybe China entered Africa um at the state to state level and go down to like how is it affecting like uh, um, people like normal people you know Africans that's very true because we do know that there are also many Chinese people that are not agents of the government nope. like a private sector like yeah. a business people mm-hmm. that have come into yeah. you know like uh, uh, Africa because uh, from our researches like the government uh, of China around. 2000 was encouraging its people to go out, you know, to, oh, to, 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 look, to look for it. Part of their foreign policies is to spread the diaspora. That yeah. is something that Xi Jinping boasts in every single speech. Mm. Part of it is to spread the diaspora and have more mixed Chinese babies in the world, you know? Everywhere. That is part of it. Part of it is that he wants the culture to spread. Um, and I think one thing that people need to be reminded is that the manufacturing companies that I mentioned that manufacture these raw materials and 
like basically make it like more cost efficient for them because they're extracting and manufacturing basically in the same spots in the same country and then they're then they're exporting back to China. Yeah. So basically they're importing it back to themselves. Yeah. And um that is a completely the company is doing the manufacturing is a completely privatized sector yep, yep. in China. Yeah. Which is quite shocking mm-hmm. because you automatically think communism and you know no no the why would they encourage that and yeah. but China's not fully communist right now like that's an honest opinion and it's that's not their ideology so people need to remove that label away from them. But um they these manufacturing companies are internationalized companies they're privatized companies mm-hmm. so i'm just saying looking at it a lot of the times if let's say shit was to go fucked up and a manufacturing company did not follow legislation in the country that he set up a manufacturing thing in chinese governments will dust their hands and walk off immediately mm. because they'll say it's a privatized company it's an internationalized company there's no government patent that i sent him yeah 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 to yeah, go yeah, back there yeah, yeah. that's not that's not like it wasn't a government order like that's not what we said it's just people that we said we'd open the borders yeah. for more more of our stuff people to come in so that's still a possibility and that you see changes a lot in terms of how socially people connect with the chinese that come mm-hmm. and the chinese that stay yeah In Zambia there are so many videos I I can find as well if you go on YouTube like where people are upset yeah. they see their jobs being taken yeah. and the work they get given from these Chinese manufacturing companies the pay is not enough the hours Listen. are not humane Horrible. the treatment is not humane like you know and stuff like that and so these are all human rights violations mm. these are all human rights violations that could be attacked on yeah but You can't attack it on China because China will say that's a privatized it's not to us uh, manufacturing government. company that's their problem this is not a government thing and so and send somebody else mm-hmm. like it's that simple but it leaves such a bad lasting impression on the people there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and i think this comes down to like the concept of culture right like you would want to, China if China's going to be sending out these people and opening the borders and telling their people to go abroad and import and export back into China mm-hmm. you know unconsciously like they're like pumping their own economy mm-hmm. they these people don't understand you know you need to have some form of ability to assimilate mm-hmm. or want to assimilate mm-hmm. the openness to allow for it to happen yeah. the respect mm-hmm. and a big big part and this is not just on China but Asia and this is something that a lot of Asian activists and lots of um Asian heritage people came forward to speak about is during the Black Lives Matter movement is there is internalized hatred for race within Chinese within Asians within mm-hmm. Indians South mm-hmm. Asians you name it you know mm-hmm. Southeast Asians there is and that comes out that is that is prevalent in a lot of places and mm-hmm. unfortunately Zambia is in the dark side of that it is it's so it's, in the it's in heartbreaking some of the videos i've seen and the treatment is really not right yeah no yeah. like i've seen some as well like i give you an example for like uh, especially when it comes into retail like industry yeah. like um the way um zambians locals you know who are just used to actually like you know grow their own thing and have their own chickens like overlooked because yeah. you know when they go and say they they chickens which i mean they will wait until they are fully bodied and they are ready to be eaten which yeah. will take probably i don't know more than six months True. so it will be pricey mm-hmm. compared to the chickens that um chinese people will actually bring on the market mm-hmm. you know being three four uh weeks old and full of chemicals because they want to pop it up to be um ready to sell like uh is it so like uh, when i was watching those those videos and seeing how um even some of them were displaced from their own homes because they, they wanted to mine that land on a false premises that way i look at it it's it's almost like it makes sense for someone to be afraid of what china is doing in terms True. of like i would being colonized again you know i would be dominated again mm. do we feel control because You know, imagine I'm in Burundi and I've been doing all these things. I've yeah. got my little family, but then I'm being told to move from there. True, or yeah. the business that I was doing, which was selling my my chickens, now I am I, I, mean, can't, I, do I can't do that, that because yeah. someone else is yeah. actually like taking over and selling those chickens True. at a lower price. Actually, yeah. changing no, changing their dietary, changing their culture, changing their livelihood. Yeah. When I look at it, you know, all together. 
I do, uh, I do understand why even personally I'm curious mm -hmm. because that's like out of nowhere. Like it's recent. We are looking at it and we keep on hearing about it. And you it. see it happening every day. Yeah, but yeah. we don't even invest into it because yeah. we were thinking, oh, well, well it's China is just like, you know, being in yeah. Africa and making these trades. But when you look deep down, it's almost like scary because it's a blessing, but not really mm -hmm. at the same time because you know, the people, average people are the ones who are actually suffering. suffering right. Yeah. You know? I see. I, I, I understand that and I see that completely. Um, I think, like, for the, I think maybe an optimist would say, you know, more than like the infiltration of culture, language and food, it's, it's the integration of it or like the right. integration of culture, language and food. And it's inevitable at this point. That's the optimist in me that wants to say that. And it is, it is partly true, but, um, you, you are right to a certain extent in the sense that, um, like I said, there needs to be like an openness to come in and actually want to assimilate to these cultures and take part in these cultures and grow with these cultures. You know, I think something that like Africa, very much like New Zealand, has always been a place for people to come and always seek refuge. Yeah. Always seek refuge. And I think um, even if these people come, they need to come with good intentions. Yeah. And the question yeah. is how many of them come with those good intentions. Mm -mm. And I understand that because for a lot of them, they are, and I'm not trying to stereotype a particular, you know, as, like associated image to a particular gender, but, and a particular, t like, choice of life. But it's, it is ideally like bachelor men that come who are barely educated, who literally just come in for the sake of, they can move around, you know. Mm. Unmarried men are the easiest to displace and move around always. Mm. It happens so it happens all the time in African culture. You send the husband to go work somewhere else and the wife stays with the kids and looks after her. Mm. Very similar approach, very common to send these group of people who can come in with no literally like no fucks given, can do whatever they want, you know. And most of the time in Zambia I've seen videos of police arresting Chinese men. For like smuggling guns. I know. Yeah. They, for smuggling guns. Are questions of yeah, for too, smuggling drugs. Even in South Africa. Yeah, like. you know, a lot of the things we're not looking at is like now that we've created these ports, China's China brings in a lot of the world's drugs and makes a lot of the world's drugs. Mm -hmm. Those are more drug routes open. So like, you know, all of this stuff is affected and it does exist. Colonization is a really, really, really big word. It is. And to say that to what China's doing, I think sort of takes the pain and the effect out of what Europe did with the suffering of the genocides and the slaughterings and the, you know, like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's, it's just too painful and too heavy of a word to try to say that China, that is doing it quite peacefully so far, I wouldn't use the word colonization. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I get iffy about it. But... If, so you wanna, you if you want to look at it, if you want to look at the symbol of colonization and the aspect of taking over people's minds and taking over people's livelihoods and the aspect of that, I see why people see similarities and the need to use that word. Mm -hmm. um, well, at is, the end of the day, when you look at uh, like uh, the process of colonization and the fruits yeah. of colonization, yeah. like even going back to Burundi, yeah. it's like the first produce were given to the uh, missionaries, right? Mm -hmm. Which meant that... Um, you go to work and you do all the hard work and then you will give your first produce to the missionaries. Yeah. You look at what like China is coming and doing here, it's like some people have actually spent so much time looking after their herd to sell, but then they can't even sell it yeah. because, yeah. I mean, you might say it's not colonization, but it's a form of it colonization. It is a form. At, 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 at least, at least you because are the consequences yeah. are actually almost the same. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, with their talks about um, Zambian people learning Mandarin, you know what I mean? Same thing as colonization. Why do you speak English in Botswana? Why do you speak French in, in, in Burundi? Indy, correct. Right? Yeah. So, if like Zambia is going to turn out to be speaking Mandarin, and my yeah. question will be my curiosity yeah. uh, is are uh, uh, people in China learning how to speak? The language from Zambia. Well, or if, any if, language if from Zambians whatever. were to go there and try and force and influence the culture so that the they, Chinese are doing, who says that won't happen is my question. See, and that one thing to look at completely is the fact that Africa, as much as China is having a presence in Africa, we are sending 
people to China too. Yes. There is an exchange of education and resources that's coming back. Absolutely. In. You know, we're sending people to go and the amount of individuals that I have seen and I and I look at this just in the terms of relationships yeah. and people I know in my personal close, close circle back home who are Batsana who have married Chinese and the integration of culture and the Chinese partners can speak Setswana so fluently mm. and really really well mm. and they take part in culture so well you know and it it's things like that that make me want to stay that I don't want to look at it solely as the loss of culture mm. or the loss of a sense of identity mm. I would like to say cuz identity is something that's always changing but I I understand in the in the aspect that you're saying it's a form of colonization it definitely is you're economically d- making them dependent you think that you're not giving them platforms to be dependent but you're saying listen i'm going to i'm going to take all these resources and i'm going to give you infrastructure instead and it's infrastructure that they need but you know it's it's worked really well for china in countries that did not have good political situation anyway. and good good legislative authority you know and it's really worked well for china there and they've targeted it because they've gained so much oil china is currently in they this was an this was an uh, an estimate that uh, you know was created a couple of years ago but they said by 2020 china would be the world's largest oil user and oil exporter we're in 2021 and i am 100% <laughs> sure that's true I am 100% sure that's true. So, it's just a matter of Ch- China targeted the countries that it would first influence and it did like Sudan. Sudan was having South Sudan was having their liberation and Ethiopia was trying to support and China had already hit Ethiopia and targeted Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And they had in Angola. There. Like... So Ethiopia was like, "Of course, you want to you want to try and sort out Sudan and South Sudan so you can get oil? I will help you mediate that conversation as well." And came in, you know. So China does this aspect of uh, they'll be like we're non-interfering, but we're saying we're giving you infrastructure and we're taking resources because you can't do anything about it, but we're not interfering. We're not at all interfering in your systems and your ability to thrive. We're what, not what, what do you call that? China? What do you call that little thing that you just explained? A facade. That's what okay, it is. Cool. A cool. facade. <laughs> it is a facade. They're putting on this mask to the world where Xi Jinping is like, it's a win win situation. But Yo, meanwhile, I'm exa- like, it's a win win situation. It's, like, it's not a win win. It's a win win. That's like, exactly that's, what I know? kept on I'm hearing like, from this okay. videos I was watching is like win win situation. I'm like, where? You know, we're weird. still figuring out how it's fully a win-win situation. And the fact is, that's the key thing. We're still figuring it out because it's still something that's happening. And so many sociologists, anthropologists, like we study this at university with an unfinished curiosity, mm. you know, and like pe- that's why research is still being conducted yeah. because it's current. It's still happening. Mm-hmm. And Botswana has not fully been influenced to the extent of like Ethiopia, for mm-hmm. example, you know, but I see presence and i see opportunities for it and the fact that zambia who is so close to us mm-hmm. and you know just like with what's happening at zambia i'm like well, how much mo- how much longer yeah how much longer for it to come through mm-hmm. because one thing that china is really pushing is reconnecting their trade routes mm. that is huge for them they are reconnecting uh, they call it the belt road initiative yep. the bri um, and they are trying to connect China all the way to Africa, to the tip of Africa, basically. And you're like, that is amazing. That is insane. Think about all the countries along that way. Mm-hmm. You've covered the spice route, the sil- like the silk route. You've covered so many aspects of trade. So many, like, it's just insane. Insane, incredible. Yeah, and China's uh, transportation infrastructure. Yeah. I don't know. If you ever go to China, you must go on the... I've never been to China, I've been to Taiwan, but they say Taiwan is China and Japan having a baby, so I would like to take the opportunity (laughs) to sort of say, like, if you go to China, definitely the transport is insane. It's really good. No, it's good. Their their trains, like, they are high-speed railways, you know, and it's amazing. And Mm -hmm. so if they want to do that, I can only see positives, but Mm -hmm. I'm also looking as as a huge environmental enthusiast, like, the concerns of it. And I see it in Zambia, like... The manufacturing companies, the amount of waste they produce in the rivers. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, BRI, 
how can it be 100% sustainable? Mm -hmm. You're connecting, like, I, I'm so curious to know. And mm. such information is not something that's blatantly Oopsie, ding, ding, available. Right, yeah, yeah. Because this is still in the process of creation. Similarly, they've connected Latin America, Chile, Argentina. They've connected all the way to Russia. Mm -hmm. Like, that is... It's incredible. You know, and they call it the I Silk Road. Mm -hmm. And that's maritime routes. And China's presence in the Pacific... So basically, if you look very carefully, they've targeted countries that have, they've targeted areas and continents that have all been uh, previously targeted by colonization. Actually, I can see them all the shareholders yeah. sitting on a table and thinking, hmm, how do we how fuck do we up go Europe? there? Yeah. How do we go how there? Do we, how do, how we, do we enter that? Europe <laughs> and North America, like, how? How do we I'm do this? Thinking, I see you. <laughs> But it's not about ruling. It's the world. The world. Um, yeah. So, like, when you look at it, um, uh, did you ever, does, does, did, did your research ever cover, uh, you know, like, uh, the side of, like, uh, Europe and America having been, like, present in Africa, and now uh, they've got to, like, a smart China, they have just, like, yeah. choo -choo. I mean, whoa, 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 me, me looking at it, I feel mm -hmm. like they're just not going to let, let it go easy. Do you think it is something that is in Africa, poor Africa, should be expecting from these superpowers that are probably trying to just, you know, you know, keep a Come hold in. on yeah. Africa? I think um, for a very long time, there was a very unconscious to the average Joe walking on the street. But there was a very unconscious Cold War happening between the US and China over the politics of control in Africa. Mm. And there was a point of time when Africa's biggest trade partners were Af were um, th the US, mm -hmm. followed by the U like the UK. Mm -hmm. And that's not true anymore. No, I know. That's not true. And that was surpassed long before they estimated it to surpass. Um, which just shows you the rate at which China has been growing. No, it has. It has actually. China, yeah, like yeah. it's. If I looked at that as a graph, I can. It would be the steepest graph I've ever seen mm -hmm. for growth. I yeah. would think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so. Because right now it's considered as like a, the economical leading partner of Africa. It is. China yeah. is yeah. the leading uh, yeah. trade partner for Africa. Yeah. And they've invested over over six hundred billion dollars easily in Africa, and it's. It's just, I want to, like, if, if there was an annual budgetary audit, I would love to see the outcomes of that because... It's I guess crazy. I guess it's also like uh, this what you're saying like it's not easily this information is not easily accessible. Maybe yeah. like the government, African governments as well. Maybe they might be all individuals, you know, speculating again. They yeah. might be you know pocketing something and then uh, like uh, all this relationship and these trades and these agreements are not as transparent as yeah. they should be. Yeah. So for us to be able to say, hey, hold on a minute. Why are you saying on a paper this cost this much, but then you pocketing that much? Yeah. You know, because yeah. that that's a speculation that could be like happening. Happening, anyway. it is, and I, I I do think it's speculation that's happening. The pocketing of money is very very real, mm -hmm. and it is, um, you know, I I I want people to grow, and sometimes I understand that if you come from very ruthless cutthroat environments, you want them to grow regardless. Yeah, and. Pocketing money seems to be the quickest way to grow. And it's sad. And you know what? Like, I wouldn't want people that a group of a nation has entrusted their, um, you know, guidance to, to be doing that. But it is a speculation that's definitely happening. Is it? I do think so. And I think that's something that can only be eroded with the change of generations taking new politics. Yeah. And that's why I think it's very important for young people to be interested in politics. That I think it's really imp important for young people to be interested in African politics, specifically, and African-China relations. And if you are African, be interested, read about it, learn about it, because it makes a difference. You it know? does have to make a difference. Um, so, like, in your opinion, anyway, like, in terms of looking at how you are calling youth to be involved and to be interested and yeah. take part in what's happening in their continent, anyway. Because mm -hmm. that's the inheritance. Yeah. You know, all like Africa and the diaspora, your inheritance is in Africa. 100%. So it makes sense for all of us to be interested in what's going on and see what we can do. So. Yeah speculating more yeah. in your own words and opinion. What do you think that, you know, let's not talk about African leaders because we can't really, like, uh, contribute yeah, that the, much. We still want to go area. back home at some point. <laughs> yeah. what, 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 what do you think, you know, because uh, China is in Africa and it 
it's doing its good thing for the African people, but it's also benefiting itself maybe more, more than yeah. what it's actually doing in yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that young young African out there? Like, uh, what do you think they should they should be doing in terms of like, hey, wake up, hey, this is what we can do mm -hmm. from what you have been researching. I think it's just education. It's raining for those who want to listen. And uh, <laughs> my name means rain. So this is a really good sign. And in Botswana, our currency is Pula. So this is a very good sign. And this is a really going to be a really good podcast. Are you meaning we're going to be rich? Yeah, we go... Money going to come our way. Shall we make partnership with China? <laughs> <laughs> chop, chop uh, the money. <laughs> but um, yeah, to young people. Yeah. You know, honestly, I think it's just the process of educating yourself. And there are so many resources out there these days that you could, you just have to type in Africa and China in, like on Google. You don't even have to, <laughs> you don't even have to spell it right. Like you don't As, even have to spell it, it right. It will follow you it could just be, so much. Yeah, you know, so and it will understand. And the world, like social media and the internet and just the resources of knowledge are so abundant You've got to be careful as well because it could very much be a rabbit hole leading you down into the most extreme, darkest thing possible. So you've got to look at many different sources is what I would tell yeah, young people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, pay speculation to it. I think they, I, I feel a sense of resistance from people in my generation and the generations above to go back home. Mm-hmm. Um, as an international student abroad, like I, f I understand, like you know, but there needs to be that consistency to understand that if we want something to change, we, we're studying these big topics and we see them having effect in a country yeah. that we could thrive and live in and contribute in and possibly make a difference. It mm. sounds extremely optimistic and cheesy, but you'd be quite surprised at how fast that ripple rate of effect can actually grow. Mm. And Play your part, like, you know, and I think playing that part first starts with educating yourself. Yeah. Read, um, you know, look at the news sources, look at, every, look at stuff more than just BBC and CNN because news sources as well have alle allegiances, they have alliances, and they will portray media in particular ways. So However they can control it. Yeah, however it? they can control it. So, you know... Because they've got the money. They've got the money. And you know the money, yeah. what it's doing these days. And it is. And you'll find it'll be very hard to find sources that critique China in Africa mm -hmm. because it's hard to critique right now because it's something that's still happening. Mm -hmm. But open your mind to the positives and the negative is mm -hmm. what I would say. Mm -hmm. And... Um, at the end of the day, it's inevitable. Prepare yourself. Well, um, that's a good advice. And also, um, in terms of like, uh, you know, like uh, go back home, get in, be interested, educate yourself, go back home, invest into your own country, mm -hmm. um, your own continent. It's actually also a good advice because um, I believe that... Um, it's a speculation again. I believe that it all, almost like each country of Africa has got their own uh, richness and uh, um, in whatever forms. Mm -hmm. And even though we have had um, Europe uh, exploiting Africa for certain years and now we've got this new guest, you know, China, China India. Yeah. Africa feels still really rich, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, it's not over. It could no. be 10% from what they have actually Agreed. taken out of Africa. Agreed. So in a way that I would just love of yeah. a world where um, either China, either, either, either Europe, either America can actually go to Africa with the respect that Africa deserves. Yeah. Not going there thinking, who are all these people? Why are these people so dark than us? You know, uh, well, you know let's, let's just train them to be like this. You mm -hmm. know, like, funny enough, I was watching this video and I just saw this like uh, Chinese people cracking up and, and thinking and making really, really, really fun of Africans, thinking that uh, Africans think that the China were sent by God. And they were giggling, like, you know, like, you wow. know, the, the African That's people are, are busy working in their field and they're standing there just like you're overlooking everything yeah. and they're cracking up about it that yeah. is personally offensive it's extremely offensive so like i would love like china yeah. to be in africa but i would love it to be you know in good faith yes. i would love it to be like i give you you give me yeah. let's go to agreement i'm yeah. not going to give you more yeah knowing you're not going to be able to pay me back yeah. because i've got my eyes on the Agreed. Mombasa port Agreed. or Victoria.
Victoria Falls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would love like a, a, a respect, you know, because I don't think like China will go to Europe and do something like that. Nobody no. go to America and do something like that. Yeah. Well, why is Africa undermined to that point? Mm -hmm. And that happens that because these these children of Africa that in the diaspora, including ourselves, yeah. to be like, hey, you are you are being a contributing contributing member of society here in Atorewa yeah. or anywhere else. Yeah. But remember also where you come from, yeah. you know, for the future generation. One hundred percent. Right. Because yeah. if China is the future today. Why can Africa be the future tomorrow? Tomorrow, agreed. So thank you so very much for listening to us and thank you for giving us your time. We hope that you've learned something. We're going to give you a little bit of like uh, sources, uh, links uh, in our show notes. And thank you for keeping it locked into the African Mirror. We'll see you next time.